Hello and welcome to this class to talk about the summer solstice, to celebrate summer solstice. So this class, just to firstly introduce uh, the, the kind of run of, of, of the class breakdown. I'm going to just uh, open the space so that we can call in and invoke the, the energies of solstice, but then just really get into um, kind of more the logic of understanding what is solstice, what is this particular festival um, in the Wheel of the Year. And just so that you can understand some of the elements, some of the energies that you can, and symbolism that you can play with for this particular holiday, this festival. So this will give you a little bit of an understanding. A lot of this um, will make sense if you've either taken my cycle with the wheel free course, which gives you an overview of all of the different festivals of the year, or if you've been journeying with me so far um, through the, the different festivals, through the different um, quarters, cross quarter holidays, you will start to see that each of them um, piece together like a little puzzle. And so solstice, summer solstice is kind of like the peak um, of this game, of this cycle on the wheel. Um, so it's a wonderful, really, really wonderful time to honor um, this type of movement of the sun. And I think of, of most of them, the solstice, um, both summer and winter, uh, are, are by far the most um, well-known festivals. So you will probably be able to recognize or connect with um, with this energy anyway. So let me get into sharing. Um, firstly, if you, I'm gonna just share my screen so that you can see, see these. Firstly, if you have done, if you have or you have not done, there is a um, Wheel of the Year, Cycle with the Wheel course. Um, and so I would recommend checking that out. There is a free resource to, to understand um, the year, the wheel of the year, how the sun moves throughout the, the dial and, and how we celebrate each of these um, various different festivals of, of both the sun and the moon and to understand the difference between the quarter um, festivals and the cross quarter festivals. I'll very, very briefly talk about it, but this um, goes into it a little bit more in depth. It also gives you a great overview of all of the different eight festivals so that you can understand them together. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely go and check that out. Um, then, let me get, share this, um, bear with me share this little presentation with you so that you can see if that fits. Okay. So summer solstice, um, as I'm going to assume you know about the rest of the wheel of the year. So I'll only be briefly talking about the other um, seasonal events, okay? With the summer solstice, this is considered a quarter seasonal festival. Um, so similar to the, the winter solstice, this is the opposing holiday and um, its other pair would be the equinox. Um, so this is considered the, one of the quarter festivals rather than the cross quarter fire festivals. All of these festivals are celebrated with fire. It is a celebration of the movement of the sun, okay? That is what the Wheel of the Year is. So um, summer solstice is kind of considered the peak or the height of it, um, particularly so in the Northern Hemisphere, summer solstice is when we have the longest day of the year. Um, all right, so peak of light, it's also, if you've been following, um, you know, say if you come from the, the uh, winter solstice, that's kind of like we plant the seeds. Um, or even even go back a little bit more, it's more like sowing is when you're planting the seeds. But anyway, when we think of it as seeds and germination and um, the, the stem growing and the, the, 
the flower is starting to bloom. This is the flower in full bloom. Okay, this is the celebration of that complete opening of that um, release of its absolute brilliance, reaching its peak. Um, this is all about fulfillment, illumination, clarifying your purpose or the light's purpose. Um, for uh, summer solstice, it's also known as Letha uh, in more of a Wiccan tradition or Midsummer. And Midsummer is night or Midsummer is um, celebration or party. And so this is a very well known holiday to celebrate uh, across different cultures, even modern day. Um, most people know of this um, summer solstice celebration. What it is marking is the sun moving into Cancer, zero degrees Cancer on the zodiac. And so that's what we're following with the, with the wheel of the year and as the sun is cycling. What we are tracking is the movement of the sun through the zodiac belt, okay? And so when it reaches any of the zero degrees of the cardinal signs, Cancer, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, is this one. Um, and so this is really marking this entry point into Cancer, the activation of this um, external emotional energy. So that's, you can really understand when you start to see the, and understand the, um, the zodiac, why this is such um, heightened emotion, a wonderful time of celebration. Um, and also, you know, you're really kind of celebrating the, the longest day of the year, the greatest amount of light. There's, there's a huge amount of joy, but a huge amount of emotion that is tied into that. Um, generally, this is the peak of summertime. With each of the um, seasonal festivals, you really are witnessing um, each of the seasons at their highest, at their full bloom. Um, so for spring equinox, you're kind of seeing where it is you know, really it is, you're aware of spring. Equally, if you're looking at winter solstice, you're quite aware you're in the, the depth of winter. Uh, so even though summer technically started with Bialtana this year, um, we were only just starting to creep into the warmer days. And now we're at summer solstice, this is the peak. Um, so from the summer solstice, it actually, the sun light starts to wane and um, the days will start to get shorter. Uh, but we're still, if anything, uh, I think most places now, we tend to feel the heat of the sunlight from summer solstice into Lunasa um, towards uh, August. So it's, it's kind of a, it, yeah, it really is the celebration of summertime, um, which is quite a nice time of the year. I think most people can really relate with celebrating summer solstice, we're feeling joy, feeling joyful. Most of us like to be in the sun or in the heat, in the warmth, um, whether that is actually out in the sunlight or whether that is just the sense of feeling warmth around you. Um, and not that there is a negative connotation to the dark or the cold, but it's easier to embrace the light the warmth, the brightness, the joyfulness. It's easier to embrace that and celebrate that than it is to really sit and celebrate and honor the darker, um, colder times of the year. And I mean that metaphorically as well as um, physically. So with um, Letha or with summer solstice, midsummer, essentially this is where the sun or the light and the water join together. This is the life-giving qualities that we all hold within ourselves. Our cells are water, and they are made up of an electromagnetic force, light. And then they are housed within our body, so that's the earth. So these life-giving qualities are really being celebrated when the sun moves into Cancer. Uh, which is what we're having, have it, or, which is what is happening, and what we're celebrating for solstice. Um, some of the deities that uh, are really widely recognized here, I will firstly point out: most of the time, the seasonal quarter festivals are a lot, are you know, 
a lot more of the yang or masculine deities are represented for that time of the year because it is a yang festival. Um, but equally, there are both yin and yang on, on all eight festivals. Uh, let's start though with the sun gods or the, the masculine deities. So we've got Ra, the Egyptian um, god. He is almost considered the creator of everything. Um, but this did fragment. Um, uh, Aten is also considered the solar deity in, in that it's the solar disk um, and that it was almost a non, non humanized, non um, physicalized deity. It was almost like a, a, a thing, the sun, the, you know, the, the radiating light in, in the sky. Um, the solar disk and the creator of life that came from that. Um, that that cannot be named, that that cannot be embodied. It is all of that, um, if you know what I mean. And uh, then you know, you've also got Horus in, from Egypt as well. You know, they, the Egyptian culture really, um, of, of, uh, of all the cultures, and, and it's very obvious when you look at folklore, myth, and various different um, ancient cultures, they all worshipped the sun every single one of them. There isn't a single culture that did not worship the sun. I haven't mentioned all of them here, really. Um, it's, it's not that one is greater than the other. I just happen to align more so with the Egyptian um, culture, but every single culture, the Japanese, Chinese, um, Mesopotamia, South American, the Mayan, um, the Aztec, obviously Celtic, um, you know, they, they all um, honored and worshiped the sun. And so this, uh, this energy is, is something that is recognized across humanity, across all of the, the timelines of earth and its people, its cultures. Um, other well-known, more modern time um, cultures would be also the Greek culture. And so Apollo, the sun god, um, highly recognized there as well. And the goddesses Diana, Juno, and Vesta. So those, they're more, uh, again, the Greek and Roman goddesses. But equally uh, across the board, you've got so many different ones. I just, I kind of felt like there were so many. It, to, to pick one or two is always hard. Um, but to understand that the, the myths and the folklore that we, we have heard through our own cultural um, conditioning through the stories that excite our own imagination, they all stem from the same thing. If we can break it right down, every single story, the hero's journey, the, the legends, the various different tales that we hear, that we have heard, they relate back to a story talking about the procession of the light in our skies. So we're always hearing stories about the sun. And a lot of the time through um, more modern eras where patriarchy has taken over, it's always been recognized as the sun, the son of God, as in the, the masculine child of God, and that God was the male identity. And then the sun was its male identity again in replication. Um, that was perhaps where... Uh, culture shifted its perspective and um, took things incredibly literally in that the son, the, the, the son, the boy, um, the child became direct, the direct lineage. But if we just uh, remove the male, female, the masculine, the feminine, the patriarchy, the matriarchy, if we just remove that light, okay, light source, source is all of creation. Source is our Sunlight, if we just take it from a planetary perspective, the sunlight is what radiates into our planet, giving life to each of the, the plants within our, within our land. Um, without sunlight, the vegetation wouldn't continue to flourish and grow and go through its seasonal processes of, um, you know, from, from seed to plant to full fruition. Um, to harvest and then the full cycle again of, of death and regeneration. And so that's from a planetary perspective. The source of energy is our sun. 
and it gives life to the land and to what we can eat and what we can enjoy as um, growth on earth. Then when we look at it from a human perspective, our source energy, more esoterically, our source energy is a quality of energy, a vital force, unseen, um, yet experienced. We know we are filled with life. Our heart's beating, we're breathing, we're moving our bodies, we're connecting with all those around us. But this is an energy that cannot really be nailed down or um, pinned into one particular entity. It is all of source energy and it's so all encompassing that that almost blows the circuit a little bit. So we need to put a name, a label on a source energy. Um, and so cultures have called it God, cultures have called it, um, you know, particularly as I've mentioned, the sun gods, the goddesses. Cultures have given it names because it's so much easier to identify with a uh, one being or one deity and it's one journey. And then to uh, associate with that particular story is a lot easier for our mentality to comprehend through those stories. But essentially, the sun, the source of all vital energy is what's being played out in particular at the summer solstice. It's reaching its peak, it's full illumination. And so as a being of light, uh, again, esoterically, as a being of light, we are getting to be highly activated by the source light at summer solstice. And so this is a really wonderful time to feel activated, to bathe in sunlight or light, whether that's around fire, with candles, Allowing yourself to bathe in light is so important. Allowing yourself to creatively express. So it's about action. It's not about just sitting back and being pensive. It's about taking action. Get out, celebrate. Um, a lot of places will offer some sort of solstice celebration where you're dancing around a bonfire. Midsummer celebrations, um, Midsummer's Eve celebrations are widely known. Um, and how you celebrate then is down to how you choose to. But one way or another, do something that is activating. For example, if you just want to do a private practice, you could do something like light a few candles, um, dance, dance on your own, make some sort of physical movement, creative expression of your body, of the light in your body, in your cells. Okay, so it's, it's the light in your cells that, in, that you are now aware of in your body. That's what you're celebrating. Um, we've also got uh, a few, I've just written a few other little symbolic items, like the, the colors are fairly obvious, yellow, orange, gold, you know, all those kind of fiery colors. Um, using candles of, of those colors are great. Um, or even painting with those colors uh, can, be, can be fun, or using chalks to uh, really get your hands actively moving with these colors can be very exciting. Um, drawing and creating pinwheels and sundials and sun discs uh, is also a really nice activity to do, especially with kids as well. Um, and then any sorts of flowers like sunflowers, go out into the wild and pick some wildflowers that are in bloom at this time of the year. Oak leaves so um, are, are a very strong part of, of the solstice celebrations. Um, as more of a Wiccan uh, tradition, you've got the Holly King at winter solstice and then you've got the Oak King at summer solstice. And so it's kind of, um, this is the time where the Oak King is reigning and uh, we connect to the Oak, the leaf, the strength, the growth, um, and the full fruition from acorn to oak, oak leaf and oak tree. So there are a few little items that you can have on your altar as well, which are really uh, nice for the solstice time. I've added again some uh, a playlist, some songs, um, and the full invocation. Uh, again, I love uh, Lisa Fiel's, um 
the Wheel of the Year playlist, her album. I just think it really speaks to this time of year. Very simple, um, but really gets you into the energy of this time. Um, so just to, to honor and celebrate Summer Solstice, to recite a part of her, of her um, invocation, Taking a really nice deep breath and allowing yourself to envision beautiful light pouring into your body and listening to these words. Power of the sun, we honor you this night. We leap across the fire to keep our spirits bright. Power of the sun, fire in the night. We leave behind that which blinds to restore our sight. So it's a really beautiful invocation. Really recommend taking your own time to go through invocations similar to this, writing your own invocation, something that aligns with you, with your cultural um, beliefs, with the stories that you've grown up with, that you choose to live with now and connect to that quality of honoring the life within you, the life around you, and really knowing that this is a turning point. It's a turning point with the wheel. We are turning now to embrace our light, to acknowledge our divinity, um, and to really to, to stand up as sovereign beings, sovereign, divine, solar beings okay when we use words like this we're really just acknowledging that that source energy that light is us that we are it and so solstice is one of the most amazing times to celebrate being a sovereign being to celebrate being a divine being because you are acknowledging that that's something that you've always projected is so far outside of you is now within you. It is an energy that you hold within yourself, that it's not separate. That illusion that you are separate to it and it's not attainable, that's an illusion. And that's what you celebrate, the realization, the total awakening of, oh wow, I am source. I am that light being, here now, experiencing it, being played out in my cells, in my physical form. Um, so that is a part of this uh, wonderful celebration to really realize, um, you know, because a lot of the time, particularly say in the darker half of the year, from Samhain until Mbalik, Bialtana, there's still like that little moment of kind of, oh, we're still, you know, sitting with, with this reflection and um, being with our, our more feminine, darker, reflective sides and, um, you know, it's, it's not that it's restrained, but it's not very active. <laughs> so when we get to this, uh, when we get to this time of the year for summer solstice, we just recommend going for it, like really celebrating and embracing the most wonderful things in your life. And, you know, really just letting go of the other things, just, for this time. If you like to dwell in the hardship, I'm not gonna lie, hardship comes up at any time of the year. You can't really avoid it. But make some time around this window of, um, you know, any time between the 19th to the 22nd of June, that's in the Northern Hemisphere, where you're celebrating life, where you're celebrating source in you. Look at your skin, look at the light in your body, in your cells, feel the, creative force playing out from you. This isn't an internal reflective moment. This is an active external time. Um, and so celebrate that in, by connecting with people, by getting out there, by expressing yourself. Um, that's what this time is all about. Um, to briefly reflect back and to remind us of cancer, Cancer season is being started with the movement of the sun into Cancer um, for solstice, summer solstice. And so Cancer is cardinal water. It's a very outward initiating energy, very responsive, very intuitive, but 
active on its intuition rather than intuitive and internalizing it. It's very much like, I feel this, I'm gonna take action. Um, so it's really responsive energy. Uh, very sensitive and imaginative, but it does something with that energy, which I think is um, highly admirable. A lot of people that feel super sensitive often don't have the ability to back that with action and energy that allows them to be a creative force with their incredible sensitivity. Um, so, you know, this is very much an expressive um, emotional time. And a lot of times, um, you know, the, the connotation of someone who's a cancer, oh, they're so emotional and, uh, you know, very, very sensitive and retreats into their shell. Yes, they have a wonderful hard shell. They have this capability of feeling everything, getting hurt, yes, but being a powerhouse with that sensitivity. They, they, can, they can achieve what they want to, with their sensitivity. And it's not just that they express the sad and the, um, the softer emotions. They express anger, they express power, they express energy, they express emotion, all its beautiful ranges. They just express it all so wonderfully. Um, we just live in a world where expression of emotion isn't considered um, PC and polite and it has to be done in a particular way but at the end of the day the Cancerian energy is really teaching us to take action with our emotional intelligence with our emotional guidance um, and so it's a beautiful time of the year to because we all have this energy within ourselves it's a wonderful time to embody that uh, expressive emotion and allow it to lead, allow it to guide us, allow our emotions to be the little signposts, the little guides along our life's path that teach us how to be and how to express ourselves and how to feel and be totally celebratory about being an expressive um, human being. Uh, um, so it also is represented by the crab, you know, that's what I meant by the hard shell and the soft interior. Um, but some of the other cultures that also recognize cancer season as um, the scarab beetle, that's in Egyptian times, and the firefly, uh, more so Asian uh, cultures as well. Both of these are beetles, okay, they're creatures that have a hard exterior um, and that carry something. So a firefly carries a light, a luminescent um, quality to it that lights up in the summertime. And the scarab beetle, um, you know, particularly with the, um, in, with the Egyptian uh, stories that go alongside this, with the scarab beetle, they are like the dung beetle that roll uh, the dung or the mud and uh, form this ball and they push it all the way up to the top of a cliff or to the top of a mound. And then when it reaches that pinnacle, it just allows it to fall down. And so uh, it's, it's the force of energy that allows that light or that creation, whatever they've created, to rise to the top. And then you let it release, let it be. And so that is the type of energy that we're embodying and getting to play with for cancer season. Um, and those of you that have, you know, cancer sun or moon or rising, you're just going to be more um, frequented with this type of energy, which gives you a little bit of an advantage, but every single person has this energy within them. Um, and so, like I said, just to reiterate, this is uh, where we really honor the light in our cells and then we are a physical being. We can't ignore that this reality, we are physical beings, physical manifestations of our light body. And so this is where it really connects with our DNA because our DNA is housed within our cells. Our DNA is a composition of our source creative force um, coded into the molecules within our cells that form our bodies, that form every little part of our structure, 
Um, and then that's what we play with in this lifetime. So it really is an incredible time to look back, honor your immediate lineage, your ancestors, but to also honor and acknowledge the vast DNA connection that you are connected to from an ascension perspective. Esoterically, we are reaching a pinnacle point of activating and using the solar energy, the solar at its peak, use that solar energy as above, so below to activate um, this light within ourselves. So um, that's what you're really celebrating at this time of the year. Celebrate that illumination that, are, that you house within yourself. So that's it. Um, that's a, the, the brief class on understanding summer solstice. Uh, any questions, certainly do send them over, let me know. Uh, it's always wonderful to connect with you and, and, and enhance this offering with any other um, follow-up of, of questions and links that I can share within the class uh, portal. You'll find the recording of the solstice um, meditation and guided journey in the link below. So enjoy that. If you need to get up, stretch, uh, move your body, but kind of remain in the same mindset uh, so that you can allow a lot of the words that I've used to just become part of your imaginative journey. Um, with the etheric journey, it is really letting go of the mind and allowing yourself to enter into a limitless space. So allow these words to have just filtered through you. That's why I say move your body, um, get up and take a little break, and then come back, re-listen to the, to the meditation, and enjoy that form of learning, that way of embodying this energy. So both mind and body and energy get to have a full infusion with this solstice energy. So thank you so, so much. I have enjoyed sharing this information with you. I wish you the most wonderful summer solstice celebrations. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy.